what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and to another video today i'm in the x5 and the reason for that is is because i'm gonna be upgrading the infotainment system on this car reason for that is because uh, this is a 2015 model nbt version of this uh, infotainment system from bmw which originally did not come with carplay option and i found a nice uh, way to integrate the car up apple carplay into this uh, vehicle now there are several options out there on how to add apple carplay to this uh, bmw model and i did some research and i uh, picked the one that seems to be getting the most reviews and is more most stable platform or system for that matter and the name of it is and dream it comes in this uh white box and the uh inside we have all the all the uh, necessary items in order to install this or integrate this into the NBT system on a BMW. This is a first for me, so uh, stay tuned and we'll see how easy it is to exactly install this in this uh, F15 X5. Now how this works is, is basically this little box acts as a middleman between your original NBT software from BMW and uh, adds an option of Apple CarPlay or uh, Android Auto to this uh, existing uh, display which is kind of neat because you have the option of going back to your original menus if you if you like and then you have an option to switch and add a Apple CarPlay for that matter which is kind of neat in my opinion uh, that was my one thing that I, I did not want to change uh, is that I uh, lose the capability of OEM options like all these options here which this system retains so let's uh, check what's in the box now Endream unit is kind of equipped like a Swiss army knife uh, reason I say that is because it comes with all the harnesses and plugs to integrate this system in basically every BMW model that uses the NBT system which uh, varies from a little one series to all the way to a seven series bmw so we're not actually going to be using all the harnesses that are included here only few of them actually pertain to the f15 x5 model all right so let's begin the installation process first what you want to do is basically disconnect the battery just to be safe and then we come to the front over here and we'll have to disassemble the whole front uh, end vents here and uh, the screen. fashion we got the uh, necessary items removed the dash panel is fairly simple all you need is basically a t20 there's one here one here to remove the radio but before that you need to pop this panel which is basically a, a pry tool you have to just lift it here and it'll pop right out and unplug a bunch of the AC plugs which are fairly simple now the hardest part of removing this is probably the AC uh, fa fascia along with this because this doesn't want really want to come out uh, you have to kind of force it see like this tab came out but on the other side it was left inside 
this hole over there so you gotta use some kind of force and even pressure you don't want to uh, pry it too much like this because then it will might break if you want to uh, put something behind deep and pop it from uh, from the bottom but once you have that out that's fairly simple and uh, this is the quad lock that you uh, take out from the uh, old unit and here's the interesting part if you do have this green cable and this one mine is wrapped but the one in the, this black uh black loom is also green uh, that's the fiber optic cables which have to be moved over into when into this a similar looking uh, adapter from the head unit it has these uh, same holes here so you have to transfer those over which i'm about to do in a second and we'll uh, take it from there now the screen has uh, t20s here as well and you just lift it up and you have to undo this connector for the screen as well because you're gonna be plugging in this let's see where is this this transfer cable so to speak uh, so the screen could receive the signal from the new MMI box but for now let's uh, take out these uh, fiber optic cables and transfer them over this is a very tight fit as you saw I'm probably in the time lapse I transferred this optic cable to them into this uh, new uh, new plug as you see there's not much room to play it's kind of tight fit and all of this has to fit behind this unit so um, this is gonna be interesting uh, I must say um, this is very it looks very tight so now uh, let's focus on this box here so we need to connect the LVDS cables that's the the cable that sends the signal to the screen so this cable you have to bring it down and this will this this end will go into the uh, into the uh, LS LVDS in the side and then you have the other side which is the cable that's supplied with the MMI box that's gonna go on in LVDS outside now it has a like an angled plug and a straight plug so the straight plug goes into the uh, outside like so and this end will go to the screen so you have to route it through here and uh, bring it up to here so but before we do that you want to make sure your dip switches are correct your dip switches this is the x5 model so the first three have to be in an on position and uh, the other ones have to be in the off position now supposedly this unit uses the factory mic which is another plus so you don't have to uh, use the uh, adapter for the uh, microphone integration so uh, I'm gonna test that before we button everything make sure everything works so let me just place everything in a position where it needs to be and try to squeeze this in inside behind this unit because this is very tight the LVDS original cable if you just pull it down from here and kind of run it down here in the middle like that and uh, stick it there's a there's a space here stick it here that way you could you could plug it from the back side let's see if this will work for me. again this is very tight over here so I have it here, I'm going to plug this in into the LVDS inside, like that. And make sure you, all your connections are nice and snug, 
because otherwise you're gonna have problems with the reception and obviously you will need to plug in the cable for the box so that is the right here this cable into the MA box MMI box and as you see as you see here there's like cables with the aux that's all optional that's not and it does not have to be plugged in as far as i am aware so i'm going to just tuck it in uh, once i get this situated but you will need to plug in the um the antenna cable that's for the for the gps that will need to be plugged in and that goes right here now if you want to use the uh, wired carplay option you will want to plug this harness in because that has the usb plug in it so you could use that and uh, i'm just gonna plug it in i'm not sure if that i'm gonna be using that yet but i don't want to take this apart if I want to have option to this and I'm going to route it somewhere either um, to the uh, glove box or to the tray here I'm not sure yet let me just try to stick this in behind the original head unit and see uh, how this fits so um i managed to get this thing in somehow and there as you see right there i kind of managed to place it against the wall like that and it's kind of sitting okay the plugs are on they're not uh, they have some slack in them, so they're not like they're trying to be ripped out the lvds cables goes here up and onto the screen so uh, looking good so far now this, this this bulging plug here in the back because of the quad lock the new quad lock connector so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see how's that gonna fit in there um, so uh, the antenna I ran it here I'm thinking I'm gonna place it somewhere here because it has a little double-sided tape so might be a good spot here it depends where I um, when I put everything back um, how is it gonna fit all together so let me try to slide this in right now and see if this location like I showed you like that so basically the this is the side this side has the LVDS uh, connection and uh, the other side has the uh, connection from uh, from the uh, the quad lock factory NTB unit side. Didn't want to fit when the box is straight behind it, so I found a little cavity on the left hand side, and I moved it to the left over there. And let me see if that um, that should that fit up quite a bit of space, so maybe this. This quad lock will not fit in this side. And maybe it will should it should fit. Now I'm thinking. And it worked uh, by moving the MMI box to the left over there, to the side, to this cavity here. It uh, made it made enough room for the extra quad lock to fit in this side. And uh, I could see the unit is flush. I could just basically um, reinstall the. Uh, the screws to uh, hold it in place but i'm gonna hold off because we're i'm gonna test it in a moment make sure everything is working but uh it fits it's not an easy task but uh the uh antenna i i, I basically just placed it here for now it uh 
it looks like it's gonna be a good place here but uh, i didn't i don't want to stick it on yet because i want to make sure that when i install the front fascia that it's not disrupting anything uh so uh let's see if this thing will turn on by the way when you're doing this make sure you have some rags so you don't destroy your center console i just plugged in the fascia here and the start button so i could uh, access this so let's see let's see what this brings up oh uh, we have power and according to the instruction you have to hold the menu while well, this works so that's good all right menu button three seconds oh i guess this is the menu i'm getting these warnings because i did not plug in the these buttons in the back but that's okay so i guess this is the setup Let's see, I guess I need to connect the mobile device. Start search. I'm gonna do the same thing on my phone. Just to, I guess, guide it quicker. Bluetooth, oh, there it is, that's my phone. I guess pair. All right, we got that pair. Return. Our device okay so we're paired there let's see and then airplay I guess let's see what we gotta do okay we gotta go to um, use car oh my phone is asking use carplay immediately all right and I guess airplay you gotta connect your Wi-Fi to it as well so let's see this is a password it's giving you a password so let's see my yeah, phone is loading still oh i guess it connected it even asked me for a password it tells here to enter a password but anyhow let's see how you go back you just press back i guess too many times it went back to the uh, my warnings from my original screen. original screen so press menu button two seconds we're back at the same menu oh we got this screen here Oh, and we have CarPlay, nice. Sweet. Okay, uh, these are my apps, I guess, from my phone. Let's see, uh, radio app. Let's see if that works. And uh, I don't hear anything. It says it's playing, but I don't hear anything. Go back to the menu. Good thing I didn't button this up. Let me test the camera first. Let me start the car and let's see, make sure the reverse camera works. Yep, it works. Press a button, let's see if the front camera works. Good. And uh, it should be good. If these work, the 360 camera should work as well because my car is equipped with that as well. All right, but we gotta figure, let me see if the radio works here. Yep. Sound works on the regular infotainment. Oh, by the way, the, the instruction advise you to disconnect your Bluetooth from um, from the uh, the car before you connect to the other one. All right, I think I figured out why the sound wasn't playing. I'll show you guys exactly so so you guys know what to look out for. So when you start the when you put it in auxiliary, I guess this comes up. And then automatically, it should come up with the uh, Apple CarPlay, like it does. Uh, but if you want to go back to your original, original um, infotainment, you just press back uh, two seconds, like so here, and then it will go back. Now I have these warnings on again because. Uh, 
I didn't plug in all this stuff yet so let me just void these out and make sure when you go to multimedia you got external devices this is oh it went back for whatever reason not sure it went back there so let me just see this has to be on aux the multimedia otherwise you won't have sound on carplay so if you go back right you press the media button again this comes up and uh, it's, I'm not sure why it did not show up oh there it is okay yes my phone is low so I don't know if it has to do anything with it but now you should have sound on it to prove that here let's do maps and do add destination recent for example Thompson you press start head northeast on Danielle and we have Center sound Hill Road. so that works now let's Thompson see Speedway Motorsports Park may be closed by the time you arrive uh, let's go back to the applications and let's play some sound here's some music I'm playing for my phone currently and it's uh, sound is pretty decent I must say um, you could dial the sound in if you go to which is nice there's I mean there's obviously infinite options here but if you go to car you get set up volume control but to be specific you have equalizing other settings here and you can fine-tune the sound but I have the Harman Kardon system and it does sound pretty good so if you return that then you could uh, definitely uh, there's there's room uh, for improving the particular option that you're interested in I mean obviously when time goes by I probably adjust some of these things a little more but uh, so far it does work so I'm pretty happy thus far let me put this back together so it's now is so it's in the same status as before I took it apart I put the dashboard in it's very simple all you need to do is put all the t20 torques in and uh, you're good to go make sure you get all the plugs and you're good it is all put back together wasn't too difficult I left the USB out here for a time being I'm not sure if I'm gonna even use this at all since this is wireless but if so I'll just have easy access here if not I'll just maybe move it to run it uh, further down I'll just need an extension for it but um, if I don't need it, I could just hide it behind this display here there's quite a bit of room there uh, that's where I hid the, the extra uh, cable or slack from this USB plug but uh, overall it looks good if you turn the car if you turn the auxiliary on the regular screen comes on then you get this and automatically you go on to the CarPlay and um, you could just put the music on See, and, a car, and immediately plays from your phone and then if you want to go back you could just do you could play this press the menu button and you could browse through your regular old menus if you wish if not then you could just press the menu button and it goes back to carplay which is uh, well quite nice and uh, the sound is nice as well I'm not sure if you could uh, 
tell from the uh, from the the mic from the camera but it, it it's not some people were complaining that it's not as good but you, like I mentioned if you go to the uh, to the uh, car menu here you could fine-tune it with the uh, equalizer so I might uh, you know fine-tune it uh, still but um, for now it's uh, it's good for me obviously with time as I'm using this I'm probably gonna pick up some new things on it there's some upgrades that are available for the system as well so uh, looking forward to it overall the uh, the install experience wasn't too hard and um, there's quite a bit of room actually in the behind the unit over there on the left side of the uh, of the compartment here so as you saw when I was shoving everything back inside so yeah quite happy with it if you guys uh, enjoyed this content or was helpful give me a like consider subscribing to the channel and I will catch you on the next one I'll post some updates while after I have some time with this uh, with this system uh, to see how it performs in a long range